Now I've gotta admit that I wasn't that interested in Rainbow Six Extraction until I noticed that it's apparently actually coming day one to Game Pass. So anyway, if you didn't know that, that's great news for anybody who already has a Game Pass subscription. So yeah, awesome, thank you. Anyway, so that perked, uh, perked, peaked my interest, perked my, what, what, it peaked my interest. That's, that's the expression, is, is it not? Anyway, and we also got, in addition to the Game Pass news, the fact that we've got some PC specs. So, I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's hop in here. Ah, I'm even gonna get out of your way. Look at that, guys. You could just click off the video, you see the specs, except if you stick around, I'm gonna give a lot of my thoughts on this. Also, if you don't have these particular GPUs, I can help you understand where yours falls in relation to that. I can also help you understand what are these CPU specs, because you might not have those exact ones, so uh, how good are these at these recommendations? Also, I've got a huge complaint about this chart, so let's just start with that. So, we've got low, high, high, and ultra, and at 1080p, 1080p, 1440p, and 2160p, hey, so far so good, that's better than a lot of system requirements charts do. But wait, where's the frame rate? It's not giving us a frame rate target. So is this low 30 FPS? Is this low 60 FPS? Same thing for high 1080, high 1440. Ah, that's a big question mark. Now I can give a little bit of speculation on that, uh, but that's the best I can do. We will have to wait till the game comes out to be sure. Although notice they do say there's an in-game benchmark for performance analysis. It'll also have Nvidia Reflex support and NVIDIA DLSS support. So if you have an RTX card, you will be able to use DLSS in this game. Now I have not seen anything about FSR support. However, a lot of Ubisoft games have had FSR support, so I wouldn't be shocked to see it actually uh, have it at launch or get it in the future. And there's also ways to apply FSR through, um, you know, even Radeon drivers. We've just seen that the uh, coming soon should be a Radeon driver update that will apply it uh, at the end of the rendering process through the driver, which isn't as good as an in-game uh, implementation. And that's not really the point of this video, so I'll quit rambling. But we also see widescreen and multi-monitor support, uh, Vulkan API support, uncrapped, uh, un uncrapped frame rate. <laughs> Can't promise it's uncrapped frame rate, but it will be uncapped, guys. <laughs> Now, speaking of crap frame rate, let's jump into the systems uh, system stuff. Uh, at the low end, well, I mean, let, let's do some of the easy stuff out of the way. You're gonna need 85 gigabytes. They don't specify SSD or HDD, so if they're not specifying an SSD requirement or even a recommendation, my guess is it'll run okay on an HDD. And it is relevant that this is a cross-gen console game, meaning this does run on a PS4 and an Xbox One. So, uh, you know, the low end requirements can't be too crazy. And that's what we're seeing here in the chart. Also, it looks like there's a HD textures pack that they're, uh, I I'm assuming, probably recommending as like a 4K texture pack since they just listed that under the uh, 4K Ultra settings. Um, operating system, great, Windows 10. And it looks like they're even recommending maybe Windows 11 um, since they only put that on the uh, upper end tears here for some reason. Anyway, um, it looks like you can get by with eight gigabytes of dual channel RAM. So notice the dual channel there. Some of you who maybe uh, stuck your wrong uh, RAM sticks in the wrong slot or possibly uh, got a pre-built that only came with one eight gigabyte RAM stick. Hey, you can always try to fix that. Uh, but they are definitely looks like as soon as you step up past their very low end stuff, recommending 16 gigabytes, but they're not jumping up to, two, to uh, 32 gigabytes as we've seen a few games doing lately, not many though, Icarus being one of them, and I think that game's just badly optimized. Um, so now let's get into the CPU and GPU stuff. GPU is what people generally find the most interesting, so let's start there. Looks like at the low end, um, notice this important detail, four gigabytes, because a GTX 960 had a two gigabyte version. I think that was even the main version, wasn't it? So they're specifying GTX 960 four gigabyte. And if you have a 960, it might not be four gigabyte. Check on that, hopefully you already know, but anyway, <laughs> check on that. Uh, because just because you have a 960 doesn't mean it's the four gigabyte. And they're uh, recommending that up against the RX 560 four gigabyte. Now this seems a little interesting to me because generally, I believe the RX 560 is less powerful than a 960. So I'm curious about these being placed in the same performance tier. 
Also, again, we're not getting a uh, exact, like I said, we're not getting whether this is 30 FPS or 60 FPS specifically. So one thing I'll throw out here is, while we can speculate a lot on a systems requirement chart, in some cases, developers only have certain hardware on hand in their studio that they're testing on. So sometimes you get things like this, like two GPUs that don't necessarily fall at exactly the same performance level, but it's just the kind of, this is their weak Nvidia card, and this is their old and weak AMD card that they had to test. And they're confirming that both of them can run the game okay at low 1080p, again, specifying with the four gigabyte version on the 960. And um, so let me now start uh, looking at, so, so to step up the settings, and possibly frame rate, uh, we, we've got to make a pretty uh, good sized jump here up to an RX 580 and a GTX 1660 six gigabyte. Again, um, that's uh, jumping up on the VRAM that they're specifying here. And we're also getting significantly more powerful cards. Now, how much more powerful and where does your GPU fall in comparison to that? Well, I highly recommend the chart over at um, Tech Power Up. Now this isn't perfect and different games perform differently relative to each other, but this is one of the most robust uh, GPU comparison databases that's also one of the easiest ones to use. And I've personally found it to be one of the most accurate uh, in terms of average gaming performance that's out there. None of them perfect. Um, so, so you do really still need to see how, how it actually performs in a particular game. But let's take this RX 560 and set that as a baseline. So that was our absolute weakest 1080p low GPU. And now we can kind of scroll through and you can see where does your GPU fall relative to that. Now notice my speculation is that those 1080p low settings are not for a locked 60 FPS. I have a feeling it's for like 30 FPS minimums and that in some easier scenes, you'll probably be above 30 FPS, maybe even to 60 FPS, but I would imagine the averages being between 30 and 60, and they're basically just saying it's playable at 1080p low settings without guaranteeing you a locked, uh, a locked 60 FPS. That's how I would read the chart, but again, that's speculation. All right, so your RX 560, so if you have one of these GPUs above this, you are weaker, right? You have this much percentage of that. So like a GTX 480 is similar in performance, but a bit weaker, right? Also remember that four gigabytes of VRAM, some of these GPUs that are only a little bit weaker didn't have four gigabytes of VRAM and they did specify that in the chart. So I scrolled up a bit. If you got stuff weaker than that, just don't even try. <laughs> I mean, you can try cause it's day one game pass, you know, try it for free. Well, or, or get a $1 uh, game pass uh, thing if you don't have it already. Cause I think you can usually trial it for a dollar anyway. Um, so if we scroll down, now notice that as we scroll here, like a lot of people have a GTX 1050 that's actually stronger than the RX 560. Um, you might find your GPU kind of here in between. GTX 760 is usually a little bit stronger. But again, keep in mind the four gigabytes of VRAM. As we scroll up here, we see the 1050 Ti is generally stronger than the RX 560. That's another pretty popular GPU. And um, we're continuing to scroll up here. And let's see, where were we supposed to stop? So for high settings at 1080p, they were recommending a 1660 or an RX 580. So let's keep scrolling until we hit that point. So obviously, I think as you're, as you're getting these better GPUs, you're now either turning up the settings a bit from low or, or what I would probably recommend is if I'm right that it wasn't hitting 60 FPS, these are getting you closer to hitting 60 FPS at low settings. There's your 1650, quite a bit stronger usually than an RX 560. And then um, we've got, uh, where are we at here? We're all the way up to a GTX 970. That's twice as strong as RX 560. So if that was only 30 FPS, this one's probably getting you uh, the actual 60 FPS, but um, I'm hoping it would actually be better than that because I don't think the RX 560 is probably just like locked at 30. I think in some cases it would probably be doing better. Anyway, so we're scrolling up here and then finally we're getting to our RX 580 and that's pretty close in performance to our, um, I believe 1660 here. 
Um, it's the, the 580 being a bit worse, but it's putting the 580 and the 1660 on roughly the same performance tier. Once again, with the AMD GPU usually being a little bit weaker than that NVIDIA counterpart, and again, my analysis on that is either that these are just the GPUs they had at roughly that performance level on hand to test and then guarantee that your 1080p high performance is pretty good, or that could be an indication that the game favors AMD architecture and will just perform better on uh, relative to uh, how the GPUs normally perform on average in games. So that's another possibility to keep in mind. All right, now if you wanna jump up to 1440p from 1080p, but remain at the high settings, what do we need? Well, now we're jumping up from a 1666 gigabyte to an RTX 2066 gigabyte. Notice that if you're jumping up to an RTX card, you would also be getting DLSS support, although I'm doubting that this is taking that usage in mind, right? So that would just be an added bonus to your frame rate if you're willing to take the minor trade-off in visual quality. All right, and then a 5600 XT up from your RX 580. Notice they're still saying that six gigabytes uh, will be doable at high settings 1440p, which tells me that actually I bet you don't need a full six gigabytes at high settings 1080p. That might just be the strength of the card that they had here, but maybe the actual necessity is somewhere between four and five, four and five maybe. Again, just a little more speculation on the chart. So let's go back to our chart and help you see uh, you know, how these jump up. So now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that uh, 1660 as our baseline performance, right? So we're saying that the 1660 is what they're giving us as baseline performance for 1080p high settings. They're not telling us the frame rate, but I'm hoping that at least for high settings, they're targeting a 60-ish FPS at least. And now let's scroll up to an R, uh, RTX 2060 and check how much more powerful that is, right? So as you get better than the 1660, right, you're now doing better than the recommendation for 1080p high settings, right? There's your 1660 Super, it's just a little stronger. Uh, your 1070, uh, 1070 is a little stronger, 1070 Ti, right? Here's your RTX 2060. It's about 35% stronger uh, on average than a GTX 1660. And to me that makes sense because we're jumping up at the same settings, high settings still, from 1080p to 1440p. And so um, we're just having to deal with the increased pixel count. And while that's more than a 35% jump in pixel count, um, pixel count doesn't scale uh, identically, like linearly with the, um, with the performance hit because not every calculation in, that the GPU does is done per pixel is my understanding. So um, I think that seems like a reasonable jump here. And we're also jumping up to the 5600 XT. And I think for once, we're now actually seeing cards that are usually almost identical in performance. The RTX 2060 being almost identical in performance on average, according to this chart, to the 5600 XT. So maybe that's just that they actually had matched uh, performance uh, performant cards on hand this time to test, or maybe, I mean, who knows? Anyway, we can't read too much into these charts. Now, they're recommending if you wanna jump up to 4K and to ultra settings that you go all the way to a 3080 or a 6800 XT. Also, like I said, I don't think this chart is taking DLSS into account, uh, which means that if you have that 3080, you could even then kick on some DLSS and get a lot more performance. And AMD may or may not have FSR in this title, but again, you could. Uh, what what I would say here is, we're if we're getting the 6800 XT recommended here, that means it could probably handle 4K Ultra without needing DLSS, and so therefore the 3080 should be able to as well. Um, now, whether that's 30 FPS or 60 FPS or more, who knows. Um, I would hope it's at least 60 FPS, and especially since these are backwards compatible uh, with the Xbox One and the uh, PS4, I, I don't think that's too unreasonable to expect. Now, the CPU side of things, I don't wanna read too much into this stuff, um, because to me it's weird that they step up the CPU requirements as you increase the resolution. Because usually the resolution a game runs at doesn't really impact the performance of the, uh, well, the, uh, the demand on the CPU. It's, it's just that you would need a better CPU to increase your frame rate target. So 
I, I guess I'll say that feels a little bit silly to me because if you're hitting 60 FPS at high settings 1080p, the same CPUs should hit you 60 FPS high settings 1440p and even at 4K. Um, the CPU demand shouldn't really be going up. Now, with that being said, I'll take this to basically mean you can play, because they're not giving us frame rate targets, I'm gonna assume that these aren't necessarily locked together in terms of uh, exactly what performance you're getting. I think that I would read the CPU chart as basically saying, you can play the game here, but it's not gonna be great and might not even be you know, 60 FPS. I would assume that these will probably be closer to 60 FPS. These will probably be a more solid 60 FPS without dropping below that. And that with better CPUs, they're probably guaranteeing more of a high frame rate experience um, where you'd be happy with at least uh, this performance level on a high-end system. That's how I would read this, uh, this uh, CPU chart to make any sort of sense. Other than maybe just as they tested their systems, they just have a low-end system and they just step them up and they pair low-end CPUs with the low-end GPUs and vice versa, you know, as they step those up. And so they're just saying, we tested this and we can guarantee it works without giving you any particular performance targets. That would be another thing that this might mean. Now, what are these CPUs and how, how would yours maybe compare? Um, so the Ryzen 3 1200, I can actually pull this up. Um, Tech Power Up also has a CPU database with most CPUs in it. The Ryzen 3 1200 is only four core, four thread. And the um, also the low end uh, Intel that they suggested was an i5 4460, which is also four core, four thread, although much older, uh, came out in 2014, whereas the Ryzen 3 1200 came out in 2017. Although in these generations, Intel did usually have a single core performance lead, which helped the gaming performance compete with uh, you know, newer CPUs from AMD. So do keep that in mind. But I think what they're basically saying here is you can play the game on a four core, four thread CPU, even if it's a pretty old uh, i5 from Intel. But again, I wouldn't necessarily assume that you're getting a nice even 60 FPS out of that. Now, jumping up to the 4790 and the Ryzen 5 1600. Well, the uh, 4790 is four core eight thread. So it's still a four core chip, although now we get the hyper threading and this is still from that same 2014 generation of chips codenamed Haswell. Uh, so that's still a pretty old one like the other Intel chip was. Now the Ryzen 5 1600 is also from that same generation as our Ryzen 3 we just saw, but this one is, uh, all, is a six core 12 thread chip. So I think what we're seeing here is the game can definitely benefit from more than four threads. Um, and that's why they're jumping up the performance here and having at least six core 12 thread or maybe a, a, a like higher clocked or something, uh, you know, four core eight thread is gonna help you be closer to a stable 60. And what I would guess then here is that this next step up is probably gonna be more of a smooth 60 FPS without dropping below that would be my guess. And that's our i5-8400 and Ryzen 5 2600X, which I also have ready to go here. So the Ryzen 5 2600X is still six core 12 thread, but it's a generation ahead. So you're getting stronger clock speeds and more instructions per cycle. So you're gonna hit higher frame rates with those same cores and threads. And that i5-8400 is now also six core, but it's still six thread. So I would say that there, what, what that's saying is that, you know, with a solid six threads of performance, you're probably gonna be okay here and doing a lot better than you were on the four core chips, even the ones that had hyper threading. And then their final CPU uh, recommendation here with the i9-9900K and the Ryzen 7 3700X, um, the i9-9900K is an eight core 16 thread Intel chip and it's m much newer. This is from 2018. And the Ryzen 7 3700X is also eight core 16 thread uh, from uh, 2019. So these are very high end chips. And I think I would take that to mean that this game is programmed in a way that it's probably going to take advantage of at least eight threads if you have them. I don't know if it would necessarily go up to 16 threads because these chips are also newer, so it might just be recommending it for the higher clock speeds and more uh, single core performance on the instructions per cycle. This video is way longer than I thought it would be. Wow, almost 20 minutes. So I better just stop talking. Links to this will be in my description and I hope you have an excellent day, but let me know what you think in the comments section.